Hi Libra, welcome to my channel. We're doing your this is the newest addition to our channel. Um, this is gonna be a Vedic sidereal um, astrology general prediction. Okay, for people who are new to this channel, um, it's just new. We started January 2020. Okay, so this is for this month, and we also have our consultant astrologer, Doctor Arjun Pai. So let's all welcome Doctor Pai. There you go, Doctor Pai. Namaste, Namaste, Sal, and to all your viewers. And um, we are doing the, the January scope for, you know, what is in store for them uh, over this coming month. Um, again, we will reiterate this is sidereal uh, Vedic astrology. So we'll be looking at the ascendant. Um, so we'll be doing, uh, and the moon signs. And for, uh, we'll be doing uh, Libra ascendant at the moment. Yes. Okay, so just uh, for everybody's um, attention, we are doing it from the Ascendant and the Moon sign. And always remember that it is a general prediction. We'll try to get as accurate as possible, but always consider your Mahadasha, Antardasha, which is your Bukti, um, before we go for the... Oh. Before we go to the Ascendant. Sorry about that, guys. I just got interrupted. I'm sorry. Before we go to the general prediction. I got lost. Sorry, guys. I had a call. Okay, so I picked up something else. Um, so again, the Mahadasha and the Antardasha first before you go for the um, general prediction that we are doing. So always consider your own chart first. Okay, so for the Libra, let's start uh, Dr. Pai. Um, what are we looking at as far as career finances and love for January 2020? Okay. Um, great. I think that was an omen for us, Sal, as we got it uh, started with this, you got a call. So it was a phone call and phone call shows you Mercury. And for Libra, Ascendant or Moon, you know, you will see that Mercury becomes the, the ninth house Lord and the 12th house Lord in the third house. So what I would say, and simple, that you would have very short travels coming up. You might hear from a friend, or you know, who you have been waiting for a long time. He, you know, he or she will call you over the New Year's, and they'll wish you for the New Year. So hopefully, you're going to get a call from somebody that you haven't um, been in touch with for quite some time, and they might surprise you with a New Year greeting. Okay, for Libra, so watch out for that. Also, for short travels coming up. Right? Mercury is in the third house of short travels for you. And um, you have uh, an eclipse which is happening in Gemini in the ninth house, mm -hmm. the lunar eclipse on the 10th of um, uh, January. So that's in the ninth house. So, and you have Rahu there. So I would say something around uh, your father, uh, your teacher, your guru, or even your higher self of connecting with the uh, you know, spiritual practices or whatever, you need to probably, re, you know, re rethink on what you're doing because maybe you might be doing something wrong there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you might have to really look, re -look at uh, these areas of your life or maybe even connecting with your father might be, you know, or a father-like figure. Mm -hmm. it might be something which will be there on the cards for the month of uh, January. Also, if you look at the, uh, the love side of it, it's uh, absolutely brilliant because the Lagnadipati Lord, which is a lot of the ascendant or the moon, which is Libra, Venus, Venus is going to the fifth house, yeah. sitting in the friendly house. So beautiful time for relationships for, uh, you know, for Taurus, uh, sorry, for, uh, for uh, Libra. Now, uh, quickly, I will go through some of the dates. Okay. Um, first to third of January, something related to work. 4th to 5th of January, something related to your social network, like friends, you know, gatherings. Um, watch out for 6 to 8, I would say. 6 to 8 is not going to be a favorable time for you guys, uh, Libra. Um, 9 to 10, uh, it's all about personal development and focus on yourself. Maybe you want to go to a spa or a beauty salon, or a haircut, you know, for a haircut, or something like that. So, uh, a complete makeover. Uh, then, 12th to 14th of January, you would be seeing some good family time, also good for finances. Excellent time for you to receive some finances if you're expecting something. Um, but I would say that's the best time for you, because Mars is in the second house as well. So, for Libra, good time 
you know, being the seventh house lord, expect some money that has to come even from your, uh, from your spouse, from your partner, or anything that has been pending from your friends, you receive that. Uh, 15th to 16th, I would say again, uh, short travels. If you're planning on something, 16, 15th and 16th is going to be good dates for you to travel. Um, then 17th, 19th, homely affairs. You know, spend a lot of time with your family at home. Maybe, you know, get decorating the home or something because, um, you know, Saturn is setting the third house for you. Mm -hmm. So it's good to get rid of the clutter from the house. Mm -hmm. 20th to 22nd, best time for, uh, you know, for relationships. I would say excellent time for you. Mm -hmm. And 23rd to 25th, watch out. Libra guys, you know, this is uh, a time when I would really say you need to really watch out because I would also say, especially related to your travel, watch out for when you're traveling, there might be, if you're uh, having too many connecting flights, then you might miss one of the flights, so be careful about booking around that time. Mm -hmm. um, 26 to 27, um, you know, family time with your partner, kids and children. 28, 30th of January, uh, again, I would say a caution, um, a, a sense of caution for those people uh, related to their relationships. Okay, don't aggravate any situation in terms of your partner. If you're going on a, uh, out on a date, then be careful about what you say, what you speak. So that's largely what I see for Libra in the month of uh, uh, January 2020. That's that's, that's uh, perfect. I feel uh, I feel Dr. Pai that majority of the people here are really really wanting to know you know that activation of that fifth house. Um, as far as like you know um, fifth house is romantic connection. This is also um, the part where we have um, how to call it, speculation for business. You know th that's the fifth house creativity things that makes us happy house of mantra. And when Venus sits there, because um, what uh, Dr. Pai was uh, expressing there, as far as like your natural uh, ruler, Venus, it activates that house. So, um, Dr. Pai, when we focus our energy on fifth house um, for the Libra Ascendant or Libra Moon, what are the uh, majority of the things that they should be focusing in so that they can improve that house for this uh, transit? Because fifth house is a very good house as far as like... Uh, for uh, how to say it's um, from the Libra ascendant. Yeah, for Libra ascendant, it's an excellent time for also focusing on your past life uh, merits, also bringing out the best out of it. Also, what I want to say to you, uh, Libra, also know that the tenth house lord for you in Vedic astrology, which becomes Moon, and Moon and Venus are going to form some beautiful connections this month. So I'll just give you the dates when. You know, Venus and Moon also brings out the, it's an emotional side, but also a huge connectivity, okay? Mm -hmm. It's also about passion, sensuality, and connection with your partner. So these dates, I would definitely say Libra, guys, please know these dates. Because Venus and Moon will be forming um, a square on these dates in Vedic astrology. 6th of January, Libra, guys, it will be Capricorn, Aries. Mm -hmm. uh, 13th of January, it would be squared with Aquarius and Leo, which is Moon. I'm talking about Moon and Venus. Yeah. 20th of January, Venus in Aquarius and uh, Moon in Scorpio. Mm -hmm. And then you have 28th of January when Aquarius, you know, um, Venus and Moon will be together in Aquarius. I see. So these days would be very, very phenomenal because what you're doing is your Ascendant Lord is forming a connection with the 10th house. So, of course, anything with your 10th house matters is all about what you see yourself in the outside world, in your career. You know, that's the pinnacle. Or you call it uh, the, the zenith. 10th house is the zenith. 4th house is another. Okay. So, for people who are wondering, you know, it's like the 10th house, when you are born, that's what you're looking up to. Okay, so that's the tenth house. You know, it is your calling. It is the society. Um, for others, this is when you are an entrepreneur. So it's looking at that part of your house when Venus and Moon is in Aquarius. Okay, so that's what we are referring to, which is very, very important. Okay, because um, you know, as far as like tenth house for every, every, this is where we spend majority of our life, even more than the seventh house, as we are more about the society or our job. 
you know, which requires, you know, whole of our day before we even go back to our partner. And that's what it is looking at for, you know, um, when Venus and Moon is in uh, Aquarius. Um, um, one thing that I'm seeing here, Dr. Pai, is the uh, the past solar eclipse with the Libra Ascendant. Uh, this is the last part that we're going to uh, touch. The past solar eclipse happened under third house. Um, and, you know, and the third house is the uh, creativity, our will. Um, this is also some, uh, you know, part of our desire. And 11th house is where it materialized. Third house is where we want it. Um, how do you think it affects, uh, you know, the, the Libra Ascendant and Libra Moon coming 60 to uh, 90 days after the solar eclipse? Okay. Um, in Vedic astrology, um, Sal, we also look at the third house as the Bhagya or the fortune of your marriage because it becomes the ninth house from the seventh house. So if you're in a strong partnership or relationship for a long period of time, which can be equal to a marriage, you can also consider that as well. But marriage is the, is the fortune. So third house with the eclipse there happening, it would put a little bit of pressure on your relationships around this time for the, the next, you know, 60, 90 day cycle. Okay. But not to worry because you have Jupiter, which saves grace. When the Jupiter is transiting in the third house with all the other planets, Jupiter is the one which brings you, you know, a benefit. It's a very benefit. So don't worry. Even though you think there was high intensity, heavy duty energy, which was happening uh, in uh, the third house for you. Okay. That's one thing. Second thing, because Venus Oh, sorry, Saturn and K2 are together. I would say watch out for your neighbors or any scuffle with your neighbors or any arguments with your neighbors, your servants, uh, and especially your siblings, mm -hmm. your siblings. Mm -hmm. Those areas of your life might be showing some areas of challenges or concerns for you. I see. So what uh, Dr. Pai is uh, saying here, for people who are in marriage or in a relationship, you know, when that uh, solar eclipse happened previously on the 25th, um, of December, um, it is the ninth house from your seventh house, which is Aries. So if you count it, it goes to the this, um, house of Sagittarius, which is ninth house from Aries. And ninth house is Jupiterian, which is luck, which is also, um, you know, it's like your partners or your relationships luck. So that is what is coming uh, coming out. Okay, so there's a lot of things that might come out. It can, you know, it can be good and bad, but, you know, normally in that situation, it's about to shed its skin because, uh, you know, it's like solar eclipse. It's like it just brings uh, stuff out. And so that's, this is what uh, um, for you guys to be more watchful of. Okay, so um, for the Libra Sun and Libra Moon, we'll just go to the last part of this where we're going to ask Dr. Pai for last messages for, um, for January 2024, Dr. Pai. Here you go, Dr. Pai. Okay, um, a, a few of the ones that I would re really like to point out that some of them might lose a earring during this time. And maybe you can write it in the comments, people who have lost a earring. You lose one of the earrings, okay, women. Another thing what I would also see is uh, a few people might also catch up uh, infection around their ears or their throat, okay? So this, this is another thing. But I think for Libra, this is a fantastic time for love because Venus is the planet of love. It's also the resonant Lord. But it can also bring in some surprises because Venus is also the eighth Lord, right? So of certain transformations. Maybe through a relationship, you would go through a transformation and this is the time to really kind of uh, have a solid foundation and create a, a strong bonding as well. This is a great time for that. Oh, that sounds uh, that sounds very very good. Now, just to let you guys know how accurate it is, because I do have a Libra placement and I got earrings prior, like months ahead, months before the eclipse. My left ear earrings, okay, got removed and it's it's locked, like it's locked. I can't remove it until I go to the person who did my ear pierce, and then it got removed. Okay, so I'm just right now. I'm just surprised with how, how accurate uh, Doctor Pai is with his prediction. All right, so for everybody who's Libra ascendant, Libra moon, and you need to get in touch with uh, Doctor Pai, we put all his information right there. His website, his Facebook, and his YouTube channel is right there. So if you just need some consultation with uh, with Doctor Pai, um, I highly suggest you get one right there. And again, this is we do this every month for each ascendant, each moon, um, for uh, Vedic sidereal astrology so i hope i see the libra again for next month i'll see you guys again bye